Well, here we are on the final episode of Plain Talk for this restoration of the Stanley four and a half. And uh, I uh, touched up and put a little finish on the knobs and tote. I didn't want to actually strip them, seeing as they are not rosewood. They are maple or beech that have been stained. So for right now, that looks good enough. It's clean, smooth, and that's all I really care. So I thought tonight we'd look at, uh, first off, a comparison between a 70 plus year old Stanley and a brand new Lee Nielsen number four and a half. Size wise, almost exactly the same. Now this is a standard Stanley, this is not a bedrock design, but uh, dimensionally almost identical. Big difference weight. I used a uh, scale that I have here in the workshop. It measures only pounds, so um, I had to guesstimate the half pounds and quarter pounds. But the uh, Lee Nielsen comes in at a pound and a quarter more than the Stanley. It's in the castings, it's in the thickness of the blade, the thickness of the chip breaker, and the bronze in the lever cap, it all adds up. So one of the things that's been on my mind is a lot of beginning woodworkers don't have a lot of money or they're not sure if they want to commit the funds into buying something like a Lee Nielsen. It took me 45 years to get that plane. Uh, not because it took Lee Nielsen 45 years to make it, but I had to wrap my head around the cost of the plane. So, as many of you know, I sold a lot of planes last year and the year before and the year before that. And I put some of that money into a few Lee Nielsen tools. So as you see, I'm planing with the four and a half. And I'm getting beautiful, absolutely beautiful shavings. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. I use the same exact stones, the same exact number of strokes. The, the edge on this tool and my Lee Nielsen is virtually identical, the edge, okay? But as you can see, little old Stanley is doing just fine. So what does it cost? Well, a Stanley four and a half in the condition that I got mine, which was considerably good, it did not take massive amount of rust removal, it did not take massive amounts of fine tuning. A little bit here, a little bit there, you can go back to the other videos and see what I did. So I had $75 in the cost of that plane delivered to my door. Then you have to figure the hours that I put into it. I had an hour pretty much in breakdown and cleanup, assessment, maybe 15, 20 minutes in getting the blade and chip breaker ground, honed, and sharpened. And then another half hour or so in refinishing the knob and tote and then about another hour in putting it all back together and fitting it all nice. 
The time came in flattening the soul. Uh, that's a pretty big soul. And uh, that took a couple of hours. And I only took it from 100 grit, 120, and 150. So all in all, I've got maybe a half a day to maybe a little bit more of my life tied up in the Stanley. So was it worth it? Well, if all I had was $75 and I didn't have any more money and I needed a plane, but I had time, which in reality, at the distance I am further away from the cradle, time is more valuable to me than money. So let's say I bill myself at a very, very low rate of, say, $30 an hour. And I've got five hours in it. So that's $150. Plus the cost of the plane, it's another $75. So we're up to $225. And then some miscellaneous supplies. I probably went through a good $5 to $10 worth of sandpaper oils, lotions, potions, and gels. So I probably have $250, bare minimum, tied up in that plane. Lee Nielsen? You can look it up. I think the four and a half is what? Uh, $325? So there's a $75 difference if you want to look at it that way. Plus, this four and a half has so much mass, so much weight. It dampens out every tiny bit of vibration. I mean, it just, just doesn't exist. A little oil on there, it should just glide right over that. I mean, it's like there's nothing between it and the wood. Same thing with the four and a half Stanley. So, really, it's a matter of what you like to do with your time. I can do restorations, I know how to do them, I can do them blindfolded. But I really prefer doing less of them. After several hundred over my lifetime, I want to make more wooden body planes. Speaking of which, we're going to be doing a giveaway. Exactly how it's going to unfold yet, I don't know. But I'm going to give three woody planes away. I'm going to start there. I'll probably do a video in Plane Talk. On the plane I'm going to give away. And then through some form of subscribe and like and maybe mail me a postcard, we'll do a giveaway. I've got three of those, and then I've got a bunch of old planes that uh, I just am not using. And I'll give them away too. So we're going to be giving a lot of stuff away. So, my opinion on which of these planes is better? Well, in all honesty, I think it's a dead heat. When you consider, when all things are considered, they both will do the same exact task. 
I would say on a large surface I was smoothing, not an edge like this, on a large surface, a tabletop. The Lee Nielsen, just due to its mass, would perform better. But price-wise, even if you pay yourself $30 an hour to restore a plane, and even if it takes you five hours, the four and a half is still a lot heavier plane than a number four. I mean, dimensionally, it's just massive. Here's my number four. You can see. It's just a huge plane. Now I'm just showing off. All my, all my planes are set up the same way. Uh, <laughs> I, I just love the way a good plane performs. It's dry here because we're still fighting winter weather. Here's my number five. Same thing. <laughs> so, bottom line, if you have money, that's what it comes down to. If you have money, my recommendation, buy the Lee Nielsen. If you have money, you're dealing with a company that will stand behind their product 100%. Goes out of flatness, don't mess with it. Do not try and flatten a, a Lee Nielsen plane. If you have a problem with it, it goes out of flatness, or it needs tuned up, even if you had to pay them $10 or $20 or $50, send it up to them if you have lots of time on your hands and you can get a nice, a good condition. When I say good condition, how I determine good condition is when I look at the sides of a plane and I can still see the original manufacturing marks, the scratches, the scratch pattern from the grinders. If I can see that, and if I can see the original manufacturing marks in the bevel on the side of the plane, then I know that's a plane in pretty good condition. The uh, knob and the tote, inconsequential. I just ordered up some, some cherry and some walnut totes from a fellow who likes to make totes. And uh, we'll see. I might put them on this one. If you have time, and you can get a plane like this for $75 or less, buy it, clean it up, restore it properly. Please, whatever you do, remember the phrase, less is more when you're restoring. Because too much sanding, too much abrasive. I've seen people sand the sides of their plane so much that one side is thinner than the other, or they're both way out of square, and this, that, and the other thing. And when it comes to a smoother, I really don't worry about whether or not this is square right here. I, I really don't care. Because I'm more than likely not going to use it as a shooting plane. And even if I do, I can adjust for out of square with the lateral. So, if you stuck with me to the end here, can you do me a favor and subscribe to the channel? I do not get paid by YouTube. I do not get paid by anybody else. This is, this is a free public service video. But it would be nice to see the numbers climb. Now whether you like this video or not, if you stuck around till now, give it a thumbs up if you feel it's worth it. So I want to thank you for stopping by. I can do this all night long. <laughs>
That's Walter out.